Thank you, Chairwoman Eshoo. Today we're continuing our work to reauthorize the FDA user fees, which provide critical resources for the agency's medical product review programs. All of the other user fees expire on September 30th of this year, or I said all of them do, and Congress must pass these reauthorizations well ahead of that deadline to ensure FDA can continue to operate without interruption. At today's hearing, we'll review the medical device user fee program, also known as MEDUFA, and throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, the FDA Center for Devices and Radiological Health, or CDRH, has been at the forefront of regulating and adapting guidance to help develop and authorize diagnostic tests. It's also managed a supply chain for critical items like gloves, masks, respirators, swabs, and ventilators. And the staff at CDRH have been working day and night to stay ahead of the virus, and they deserve our recognition and appreciation. Their work over the last two years has underscored the importance of ensuring that FDA resources are in place to make sure we have a safe and effective medical device supply chain. The draft agreement that we're discussing today between FDA and industry will substantially increase funds for CDRH, which will lead to a significant increase in staff capacity at the agency, as the chairwoman mentioned. The performance goals included in the draft agreement will also allow for innovation through the creation of the Total Product Lifecycle Advisory Program Pilot, or the TAP Pilot, and this pilot program will allow for earlier interaction between FDA and developers and will facilitate regular engagement throughout the medical device review cycle. And this will hopefully lead to a sustainable program that builds safety and efficacy discussions into the front end of development to speed innovation in a responsible way. Now, the draft also lays out new transparency measures that will ensure funds are being spent efficiently and going to the programs authorized by the agreement and the legislation we passed. And when I mention transparency, I want to also note the importance of the process we're undertaking here in the committee today and the process Congress has laid out for FDA and industry to reach the agreement we're now reviewing. By statute, as part of the MEDUFA reauthorization, FDA is mandated to consult with regulated industry, patient, and consumer representatives and healthcare professionals, receive public comment, and submit recommendations to Congress no later than January 15th of this year. This deadline is not a mere suggestion, it's actually the law, and the process is important because it allows for FDA, industry, and members of the public to examine what has worked well and where review programs can be improved through the reauthorization process. It also provides Congress with sufficient time to thoroughly review these recommendations and reauthorize the program ahead of the funding deadline. Now, you know, FDA just released this draft commitment letter to the committee last Tuesday, which is more than two months after the January 15th deadline. FDA has not received public comment on the draft, and this is troubling considering there are serious questions about numerous issues, including how the agency and industry contemplated the extensions of programs due to the sunset in their agreement. And there's still a lot to review and more work to be done, and we must act quickly, so failure to reauthorize the program on time would be catastrophic for patients relying on safe and effective medical devices. I'm just trying to say, I'm not trying to beat you up, Dr. Sharon, but I mean, the bottom line is, you know, we get this two months later, we're gonna meet our deadline because we don't wanna have the pink slips. But I remember a few years ago when the pink slips went out and everybody was saying, well, Congress, you know, why didn't you do this quicker? Well, in this case, it's your fault. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. So uh, we're not gonna miss the deadline though. And I appreciate FDA and industry being here today to help us understand their proposal. And I also think it's, uh, it's important for us to discuss how we can improve the process so this does not happen again in the future. And we'll also review two other common sense proposals. One bill from Representative Schreier would create a new advisory panel at FDA to bring an independent public health focus to regulatory decisions involving diagnostic tests, the importance of which are still being, uh, still being seen during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have another bill uh, from Dr. Burgess that would incorporate cybersecurity into medical device applications, which is also critical as medical devices become more interconnected and technologically advanced. So look forward to the discussion today, and I yield back, uh, Madam Chair.